Okay, it looks like we have as many as have arrived this far. We are expecting a few more. I would like to welcome you to our Nursing Grand Rounds. Um, and each of the team will be introducing themselves. Today, we will be looking at It Brings the Topic of social justice and it stops there. Nursing students' perceptions of teaching practices that develop awareness and engagement with social justice. And I will turn it over to Lydia for a land acknowledgement. Thank you. Um, we are all as a research team affiliated with UBC Nursing. We held meetings on UBC campus related to this project. And although we're joining from different lands today, we want to acknowledge that UBC sits on the traditional ancestral and unceded territory of the Musqueam First Nation. And land acknowledgements offer an opportunity to recognize Indigenous people's rich culture and heritage, and also to acknowledge the colonial history that's brought many of us to these lands as any uninvited guests. And recognizing that history is a step to considering how we can address injustices, particularly related to health that are ongoing today. So we would just like um, to uh, for you all to reflect on that as we move through the presentation today. And now we're going to uh, introduce ourselves. So I'll let Ishmalia perhaps introduce herself first. Thanks, Lydia. Um, hi, everyone, and uh, thanks for being here with us. My name is Ishmael Souza, and I'm a PhD candidate in the school, here in the School of Nursing at UBC. Hi, Suzanne Campbell here. I'm a professor at UBC School of Nursing and really excited about sharing what we've learned with this project. And my name is Lydia Weitenbrock, and I'm an assistant professor in the School of Nursing, and likewise, happy to be here. And we have another team member, Elizabeth Bailey, who is also part of our project and is an associate professor in the School of Nursing and um, was not able to be with us today. So we're now going to um, review the objectives of the project or of the presentation, which are to present the findings of our scholarship of teaching and learning project and also to offer an opportunity to reflect either individually or collectively on the uptake of teaching strategies in different educational courses and contexts and how to enact social justice in nursing. And before we turn it over to Ishmalia to present our findings, we wanted to start with an anonymous poll, um, which I will launch, uh, which is, oh, which has started, thank you, Ishmalia, which is asking you just to, um, answer this question about how confident are you in enacting um, pedagogical frameworks uh, that are grounded in social justice? I think 73% have um, participated and we can see there's a range of um, confidence around um, uh, engaging with social justice pedagogically. So that's great. Um, thank you for participating. I think we can end the poll, thank you. And then I will turn it over to Ishmalia, who's going to introduce our project and our results. Thank you. Thanks, Lydia. Um, so before we, we actually started presenting our results, we really wanted to set the scene and tell you all how we came together as a team and how, um, our research project and um, our question um, arose. So what you see picture here is a roadmap of my teaching assistant development um, that begins with the instructional skills workshop at the beginning of my PhD and then follows, um, uh, what follows on are some of the courses that the UBC CTLT uh, offers and that I have completed. And it is really on the stop number three on the certificate program in advanced teaching and learning that I had the opportunity uh, to conduct a small scholarship of teaching and learning project, which is also um, um, a requirement uh, to complete the course. And I paired uh, that opportunity uh, with an application to the teaching as research internship. Uh, which is a funding stream that is offered by the UBC CTLT and for which I was successful that provided some um, uh, funding to, to support to support this project. 
So during the course of the certificate program in advanced teaching and learning, I was also the TA for Nurse 540 with uh, Suzanne. And um, I was really interested in exploring the teaching practices that develop critical awareness and engagement with social justice within the context of that course. Um, the initial project uh, did not come to fruition and we had some, some challenges. And then um, in revising it, I decided to broaden that, that project um, to, to increase perhaps recruitment, which was one of our biggest challenges. Um, and in broadening the scope of the project, uh, I also thought about bringing together a small research team. Um, and I had been the TA for Lydia for Nurse 330. And Elizabeth uh, Bailey, who is not able to be with us today, uh, had uh, acted as a mentor and as a peer reviewer of teaching in the context of the certificate program in advanced teaching and learning. So I knew that, uh, you know, we all had kind of similar teaching philosophies. But I think also that what they could offer and the perspectives and the knowledge that they could bring uh, to the team could really augment and enhance um, this, um, this project. And so grounded again on the same question, you know, the same idea of uh, teaching practices that develop critical awareness and engagement with social justice. And that's how we move on with, the, with this project. Um, and for me, this idea of, you know, how do we enact social justice in the classrooms is fundamental. And I and I want to think um, that all of us here in this room agree that promoting social justice is a key disciplinary behavior that nurses must cultivate for the, the ability to shift uh, the root causes of, of uh, social and health inequities. But that uh, despite uh, the centrality of social justice in, in nursing, that Nursing curricula is often uh, have often failed, and I, I will probably say that sometimes we still struggle uh, a bit to implement an anti-racist and decolonizing pedagogy. Um, and these struggles and these challenges are really multifactorial, and the literature that is out there has told us also this. This is the work of Alderama Wallace and Apiso Verano um, that looked at uh, nurse educators that actually highlight some of the personal factors uh, that influence uh, the adoption of social justice approaching in teaching, and those personal factors are very much related to nurses, educators, and bringing and experiences with oppression and, and discrimination. Um, but beyond these personal factors, there are also institutional factors that have been underscored by the work from Blythe Bell here uh, at uh, in British Columbia um, that really identified and um, and showcase how faculty job precarity and white resistance uh, um, uh, operate in, in tandem as structural barriers to uh, that obfuscate um, and obscure anti-racist anti -racist efforts in nursing education. But although the challenges exist, we also have ample suggestions from nurse educators on the content and the approach and the strategies for teaching from a social justice standpoint. Um, and those uh, suggestions uh, have emerged from literature that has been published from scholars that are based in the US, in the UK, um, and also here in Canada, in, including um, work from, uh, from scholars here at the University of British Columbia. What the literature also tells us is that there is a lack of consensus on how do we adopt these teaching strategies and perhaps also a lack of knowledge among, among faculty. Uh, really interesting in the course of our work was this work from Shazad, Yunus and Ali, um, which was a, an integrity review of teaching and learning approaches and, and students and educators experiences on social justice education in nursing. And what it really highlights is that we have a lot from educators. We know a lot on, on how we should be uh, incorporating and, and adopting these, these teaching strategies, but we have limited knowledge uh, from, uh, from students on, on how we should actually be doing it. And I think we can also agree that um, if our teaching philosophy and strategies should be, uh, be learner-centered and learner-informed, that this idea of how to enact social justice in the classrooms from the student standpoint uh, remains uh, fundamental to, to answer. 
And so with that in mind, we set ourselves to answer the question, uh, how or what can we learn from nursing students' perceptions about teaching practices that develop critical awareness and engagement with social justice and positively influence professional practice to inform nursing pedagogy? And, and just, just a, a word that we um, define professional practice as uh, reflecting the practice of nurses that are within research, leadership, and educational roles, but also those that are in direct uh, clinical practice. And we used uh, critical feminist pedagogy and the principles of interpret description and collected data between April and June 2022. Um, and we used virtual um, interviews with a semi-structure guide and also uh, collected uh, field notes and uh, used field notes to capture our thoughts and perspectives, not only during data collection, but also during data analysis. Um, our data collection analysis occur simultaneously, um, and after a total of 10 interviews, we deemed the data uh, collected high in information power, and, and we, we seized uh, recruitment. So of the 10 students um, that attended a school of nursing in British Columbia, uh, five students uh, were enrolled in a BSN program, and then uh, other five students were enrolled in a graduate program, of which three were enrolled in a master's program and two were PhD students. Um, of the 10 students that, that uh, we interviewed during the conduct of our interviews, um, four students identified um, as belonging and made reference as belonging to uh, IBPOC and or to spirit uh, LGBTQIA plus communities. So we would like to tell you some of these findings and um, the, the major theme that we identify in the study was the need for the teaching strategies that promote critical awareness and engagement with social justice to really go beyond fostering awareness with social, uh, with social justice among students, but uh, provide the how-to, how should students be enacting social justice in, in practice. So, and we like to call this kind of a social justice in action. Um, and uh, as one student told us, uh, and we think this reflects the, the main, the major theme of the study is that uh, educators bring the topic of social justice, uh, but then it's, it stops there. Um, and we think this really showcases this kind of lack of practice oriented and practice driven uh, social justice. Um, and our analysis of the data also suggests that the symbiosis that we think is needed and that the students tell us that is needed between awareness and action on social justice is only possible if educators adopt three main strat uh, teaching strategies. One, that they embrace personal development. Uh, two, that they create community spaces. And three, that they disrupt knowledge and curriculum uh, hierarchies. And it is about these teaching strategies and the approaches uh, within these teaching strategies that we want to um, uh, tell you about next. So if we begin with the, um, this idea of embracing personal development, um, this idea is really about reflecting on individual positionality and analyzing individual practices. And students told, students told us that educators should really reflect on their positionality and pedagogical practices. So this is just an example of a, of a student, of a quote from a student that represents that, that I would like to read. Um, as a student said, I would like, I would make a case that it is not necessarily in the choice of learning strategies itself, but in the thinking around what is the goal of the learning? What is the intervention I am trying to create here? Whose learning am I curious about? So this idea of personal development uh, should be educator focused, but not only um, educators should also extend this opportunity to students. And here we see um, an example of that. As the student says, sometimes in discussions from readings on social justice and race, it was asked, how do you practice this in your practice? Or how do you bring this awareness into your practice? That was also a good way to see what you're really doing. So encouraging self-reflection. Uh, self um, so these opportunities uh, that educators should create for students to prompt reflection to analyze their own practice. Um, and in our analysis, we also saw how 
the impact of this uh, reflexivity um, on the on the recognition of student of the role um, of students' roles uh, as nurses. Um, and this is just an example of that, as the student said, I feel I have a really different positionality and responsibility as a nurse than I've ever had before. Nurses can be the nurses who mock Joyce, Joyce uh, Echaquan, or they can be the nurses who are doing the total opposite, acting in accordance with the values that we've talked about. I feel that I have a lot more responsibility to be conscious of the impact of my actions. So embracing personal development is really about situating the self and learning to understand our own perspectives and perceptions as, as educators, but also to foster that among students. Um, for some of you that are familiar with Bell Hooks, Bell Hooks talks about this idea of radical openness or being open, uh, the openness and or ability to explore a, a, plural, a pluralism of perspectives. And we think that this teaching strategy really allows, allows that. Um, and also we know from the existing literature, uh, from the standpoint of nurse educators, that this, uh, the need for self-reflection and self-criticism is, uh, is fundamental. And um, while individual reflection was foundational to educators and to students to develop you know, this critical awareness and engagement with social justice, this idea of uh, the symbiosis between uh, the theory and, and the practice per se, uh, being community, this idea of creating community spaces also enriched students' uh, reflections. And this was a lot about uh, foster this learning from um, and within the community. Um, the student, this undergrad student, told us when professors invite guest speakers whose work is focused on that same single issue that they're trying to convey, I feel I get connected to that material more than if they present themselves but don't go into so much detail because they don't know much about this subject. Um, a really important uh, feature um, of our work that we really identify from what students were saying was that guest speakers were not only uh, the nurses already in practice, but also the people with lived and living experience uh, or the activists that were um, invited to, 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 to participate in a course or, or in a class. Um, and so community here, so we want to draw your attention that community that we're talking about here is really about you know the people who lived experience, the activists, the faculty, um, but also indigenous elders, as we'll, we'll show you shortly, and uh, but also in, includes peers, so other other students. Um, and here is an example of that. Um, the student was talking specifically about um, the the book club that they had in the school, um, and the student tells us that told us that. The book club helped uh, help them, so helped me develop my awareness, especially because we had more time. The environment felt safer for us to talk about things and we could develop a relationship with each other over the course of that time to feel safe in that environment and to share what was on our minds. That felt a good way to explore and understand beyond my own experiences. Um, but not all experiences were positive, and um, at least one student did tell us, um, uh, recall a negative experience uh, of witnessing an, an educator, um, an educator's reluctance to accept um, students' perspectives on, on social justice, specific during, during class discussions. Um, I have I had mentioned before um, that community also includes uh, Indigenous elders and uh, Indigenous elders uh, really took central stage um, in our data and um, we really think this, this quote captures it perfectly. Um, this undergrad student was uh, talking about uh, hearing from Indigenous elders and they said, well, it is because people can use buzzwords like culturally safe care and truth and reconciliation but none of that has meaning. I know the definition of those buzzwords, but unless it is in front of me and creates a long lasting memory that I can refer back to, then the definition is quite weak. And now that I have these memories of these elders speaking directly to me in my class, telling us how we should be implementing culturally safe care and truth and reconciliation into our practice, I will never forget the words. So what we really saw is that um, the, the effect that it, the bringing 
uh, in the teaching of Indigenous elders into courses really allows, particularly for undergraduate students, to relate concepts that perhaps until then were a bit abstract and to operationalize them and translate these concepts into, into direct clinical practice. Um, and so in a, in a kind of a summary of the, the teaching strategy of creating community spaces, creating community spaces is ultimately, we think, about breaking down with very um, traditional and uh, individual systems that operate in academia. Um, but also what we think is, um, is of importance here is that oftentimes we talk about education in the context of educator and student um, or student, student, student to student. But um, what our findings highlight is the importance, maybe it's more of a triad, you know, the students, educator, and wider community. Um, and I, we do think that this is an important, an important point to, um, to raise. Um, and lastly, um, the third uh, teaching strategy is about disrupting knowledge and curriculum hierarchies. And um, we, we would like to talk about kind of three different approaches. So the first one um, is about connecting history to the present. Um, so three different approaches that would allow us to, to disrupt knowledge and curriculum hierarchies that we identified from the data. So one of them is about, is uh, on this idea of connecting history to the present. Um, the student told us that the nursing history course was for me the most profound because understanding the history of racism in nursing is an important foundational understanding of how we are here now and now based on our past. There was a discussion of indigenous nursing associations. There was even a class or two about social justice when it comes to the Black Panthers involvement in healthcare in the United States. Those, those all had social justice angles, which is not only great exposure for me to understand our history and now, but it also gives me ideas, incentives, and inspirations to see what I can do. Um, and although this quote reflects you know, uh, the existence of a history course and, and the importance of the history course, uh, students also told us about these kind of small nuggets of history that are embedded within courses um, or they are embedded within uh, classes um, and that relate to, the, for example, to the topic that uh, was going to be discussed in that, in that class. Um, still within the this teaching strategy of disrupting knowledge and curriculum hier hierarchies um, is the importance of challenging normative discourses, of kind of challenging existing uh, knowledges, as a student told us, kind of this idea of not to take what you're given with no question. Um, and again, uh, um, uh, an example here from, from a student, um, that told us there was one reading from a group of previous nursing students, and it was sort of questioning. And I thought it was really cool to have this article that was written by students, and it came in super hot, saying these things are problematic, and the way that we see knowledge creation is really problematic, and there needs to be this way to kind of expand and explore and be critical of these different things. Um, and lastly, within uh, this teaching strategy, this teaching strategy is really about um, the need to consistently weave social justice to uh, as a way to disrupt knowledge and curriculum hierarchies. Um, and this means um, weaving social justice uh, in, um, uh, within and across undergraduate and graduate programs, uh, courses, classes, but also within assignments. Um, and um, we decided to bring you this quote from a student, from an undergrad student, um, that was reflecting specifically about this, this idea of uh, weaving social justice in, in, within assignments. And the student said, the program is so heavily weighted on these multiple choice tests. They don't test you well when you're talking about social justice, a relatively abstract subject and social justice is relevant for everybody in this program. We are all healthcare professionals, so we all want to do better and contribute to people's lives. So I think written assignments where you get the opportunity to engage critically, maybe analyzing a case study, explore what is happening in this situation and what you could and would do, um, or a long answer paper. So before I pass it on to uh, Suzanne, um, we wanted to circle back to uh, this image that we believe really represents and summarizes our findings in a very neat way. Um, and also to point that um, 
critical awareness and engagement with social justice requires from, uh, from our reflections from this work um, and from what the students have told us, more than the surface uh, structure changes that have been offered in the literature. So it's not really about, uh, do I use a case study or which case study do I use, or uh, do I use uh, do, do I use a, a small group discussion or large group, group discussion? It's really about the deep structures and the implicit uh, structures. So, um, how do we impart uh, knowledge? How do we best impart knowledge? And um, how do we reframe how nurses think uh, about social justice? How nurses act? Uh, how nurses perform social social justice. Uh, we think that's really, really important. Um, so thank you for listening. And I'm going to pass it on to Elizabeth to take us uh, to the next uh, part of the presentation. Sorry, not to Elizabeth, to Suzanne. <laughs> and actually, Elizabeth was supposed to be doing this part of things, but we uh, flexed quickly. And uh, those of you in the room can be feeling the pride and joy of um, having this caliber quality graduate students in our program as well. Yeah, it has been wonderful. And so we wanted to make sure we gave you time to have the pleasure of what we have done over the past year and a half or two years on this project, which is really to talk about and unpack some of this. I wish we, well, it, in a manuscript, we will capture some of the rich conversations that we had as a team, but we're going to put you into breakout rooms and for those who don't enjoy breakout rooms or at a point right now they don't want to be in one, you can go to silent work and be on your own. I know for a lot of people you sign up for these things thinking, I'm not going to be on camera. We will be editing the um, recording so you will not be shown. But in those rooms, um, we're asking you to join a discussion uh, when we open those rooms and to think about ideas that might have been generated um, through that discussion. So you're looking at this concept of social justice. How do we enact it? I was looking at the participant list. It does feel like we have a couple of um, graduate students in the room um, to join us or students. Uh, and so we're asking for those who are in various roles, consider your role. So are you an educator? Are you a teacher, um, TA student? How can you enact strategies um, in each of the three categories from your current position? And what we will be providing is a Google document that has uh, the beautiful framework that we've identified with some of those things that were on the last slide. Think about enacting them and then what are some next steps you would have to do as far as embracing personal development, creating those community spaces and disrupting knowledge and curriculum hierarchies. We're going to give you about 10 minutes to do this. For those of you in the silent breakout rooms, you can also add anonymously to the Google document so that your thoughts will be shared, but we will come back within about 10 minutes so that we have an opportunity to kind of debrief, unpack, and we want you really to enjoy some rich discussion together and what our presentation might have brought up for you. Okay, so uh, we had given ourselves 20 minutes for this, which means we have about five minutes for a wrap out. And I know the room I was in, we did not have enough time. <laughs> we, we could have used much more time to continue the conversation. But I would like to hear just a few ideas um, from the groups as to what came out in the, in the smaller group sharing. Anything that you think we would all benefit from hearing? We'd given ourselves, well, there's not a time affiliated with it, but just a few minutes to share. Uh, we could cheat and look at the Google documents. Um, Breakout Room One has a lot of ideas and I was seeing some being repeated. Um, the concept of not re-traumatizing individuals or that sense of tokenism when we're incorporating some of these ideas and how we grapple um, internally with what is not going well 
in practice, whether that's as an educator, as a practitioner, or whatever, and what our students are exposed to, how we help them unpack some of those experiences. Um, and this is where I, Lydia and Ismalia, feel free if you were in different rooms too, to share. But one of the um, issues that came up is that we're kind of preaching to the choir that it seems that the 10 students involved in this study were very keen on this topic and had you know, already put a lot of time and energy and thought or had had experiences that prompted them to participate. And so what to do about the group that may not be as keen and is actually resistant to learning and incorporating some of these items. So I'll just toss that out. Happy for people to raise hands, respond. I'll just jump in quickly, Suzanne. I think it's a really good question. I know that as a research group, we discussed that. Um, I can say, you know, from the standpoint of the literature, I, I have not come across anything um, a, around that, but I, I do think it's it's an important question. Um, I don't know the answer. <laughs> Well, and as we discussed it, it came up to, um, you know, that very first area of uh, embracing personal development and that all of our students and faculty are at different points in personal development. And this topic can be very triggering and there can be guilt or fear or resentment or who knows what all the underlying components can be. But um, I think that's why it's important to think about what needs to be done and that it's not a one size fits all. Um, what we were hoping that you would leave this experience with is to help us think about a few ideas about some of our school goals or educational goals across Canada. If there are those of you here not at um, the School of Nursing at EDC. Uh, and then to identify kind of a SMART goal for yourself. What is a personal or professional goal that you could make for yourself um, in regard to this area? Even if it is just more, you know, examine um, uh, the literature, uh, attend a um, learning circle, find different ways to connect, search out a guest speaker for something that you're doing or more concrete than that, you know, how you incorporate it into um, innovative teaching experiences. I know that um, for the leadership course for our undergraduate students that uh, is almost up, they do their World Cafe a week from uh, today or tomorrow. And we've asked them with each discussion topic to create a SMART goal. And the one around um, recognizing culturally diverse leadership and the importance of indigenous leadership, their goals were amazing. So. I challenge you, you know, as part of attending this presentation to please consider something for yourself of what you want to do. And I want to reach out and thank the anti-racism and indigenous committees at the School of Nursing, because I think the resources they've provided, the conversations they've allowed us to have, faculty, staff, and students has been really important in this area as well, to thinking about how to enact social justice. So that that was sort of my bit on this. Do we want to open up for questions and comments? I know, um, Ismalia and Lydia, that there were questions about how could they sit with the team and provide lots more input on their thoughts about this topic. So we will think of a way to manage that. Ismalia, I'll hand it back to you, I think. Are you able to hear me? Sorry, my internet is a bit unstable. Um, I have nothing else to add, Suzanne, but I just want to thank uh, everyone for, for taking the time uh, during your lunch hour to, to be here. Um, and we will look into the discussions and, um, and also come together as a team after. Uh, but thanks very much. We hope uh, this was productive, um, that it gave, uh, gave you some food for thought. Um,
some more questions perhaps. Um, and uh, we would love to have had more time for, for discussion, but, um, but we hope this may be what is the beginning of further discussions that you may have. So thanks very much for everyone.